I want to remind you the three things that we always do. Okay, we're going to play hard. Okay, again, and you do that, and you, I love the way you do that. Win or lose, rain or shine, you always play hard. You're going to play with class, again, second to none when it comes to that. And then most importantly, what? Have fun. Have fun. Okay, and if, boy, if you play hard and you play with class, that having fun makes it pretty easy. <laughs> this atmosphere, and I told you, these people believe in you. You saw that in pregame. There's already no places to sit. 6.45, the stands are full already. They believe in you. They love you and they trust you. And it's so awesome to have that opportunity to do this. Friday Night Lights is brought to you by Don Ringler Toyota, Don Ringler Chevrolet, and Baylor Scott & White Health. Welcome back to our live stream portion. Of course, you just heard Rock Hill head coach Jeff Miller saying that you got to believe. At 6:45, everybody was showing up. We knew it was going to be a packed house. When the bell is on yeah. the line, Milam County shows out. This is uh, it's a safe bet. Yeah, I'll tell you what, it was a really, really, really good game. We'll get with Jessica Moore here in just a bit. But if Rock Hill and Cameron Yo didn't play tonight. Of course, our other game of the week, La Vega, China Spring. We've been doing that for years. We have been. Recent years, anytime these two teams played, it's an instant classic. On paper, it looks like a mismatch this year, but when you've got your rival in town, it's always a big game. And so we go to a packed house at Cougar Stadium in China Spring tonight. Could Brian Bell pick up his first top five win of his young coaching career? Off a of Cougar punt, La Vega driving, Ara Rawls in the gun, fires, Malachi Wright, get up, making the beautiful catch. First down, Pirates later in the drive. Rawls in the gun, calls his own number. Going to his left, shakes the tackler, gets a block, cuts back to his right, switches the field, into the end zone, 30 yards, 7 nothing. La Vega. China Spring would punt again. Then on the ensuing drive, handoff, Elijah Cummings in from the 1, 14 nothing. La Vega leads at that point, 56-17. Wow. The Pirates win. Score from around Class 4A, Robinson Rockets. They were on the road at Mahega Thriller. They Ooh. win 35-28 in overtime. A thriller in Madisonville. Salado, they fall My by one, goodness. 42-41. Connolly in Fairfield wasn't a uh, thriller. 44-9 they fall. And Lampas has knocks off Taylor 42-20. Let's drop down to Class 2A. We had a huge game in District 8-2A. 2-1 Riesel met up with 2-1 Axtell. Third quarter, Longhorns have the football. Kobe Hillsworth gets the snap, tries to find an opening rush to his right, but the Indian defense too quick, knocks him down, and uh, gets that little tackle there. Later, Riesel ball, Solomon Alvarado gets the snap, but nice pass defense by uh, Axel's Kyle Saunders, and then Solomon Alvarado gets the uh, handoff to Brayden Jenkins, runs up the middle, gains some solid yards on the outside, almost runs over for reporter Cole Johnson. We don't need him injured. And then Solomon, Alvarado again, the handoff to Steven Searcy. Close to the end zone. This game, look at this, Riesel, 33-14 the final. You see this big touchdown here by the Indians. It's a big win for the Indians there. Bruceville Eddie looking to stay in playoff contention, hosting 1-6 Moody in the battle for 107 tonight. Trapper Enser, the carry by T.J. Jarman, and he's going to get brought down by Caleb Rector. So, Nathan Quattlebaum gets the snap here for the Eagles, takes the ball around the outside, but he gets stopped at the 15. So, Enser going to pass. That ball is caught. Damon Allen takes him out of bounds. This game belonged to Bruce Villetti later on, though. They win in this one, 28-zip. Pitching the shutout. Could Marlon pick up his first win of the season? They travel to face off against Milano. Pick it up third quarter. Milano up 24-0. Christian Thurman handing it off to Kathan Funburn. He runs it just shy of the 10-yard line. Next, Thurman going to struggle here for a snap, but uh-oh. Holds on tight. Going to run right into the end zone for six. 31-0 Milano. Marlon's Braylon Fisher gets the ball. Calls his own number. Rolls to the right. Bulldogs cannot get much going there. We go to the big board. Marlon, they fall again this year, 38-13. How about the Mark Panthers? Number three, Mark looking to go 3-0 in district play. They're hosting Hubbard. There we go. Good scene out there in Mark. Early touchdown there for the Panthers. Then again, 
Hart's got the ball. There's Kyler Martin later on. Hubbard's ball. And then uh, Martin. Here's Shatidrick Bailey up the middle. Big gain for the Panthers. And then uh, you got what? Kyler Martin hands off to Tyreek Horn. The guy's unbelievable. So, all, everybody's unbelievable. And, and then, then guess what? They don't kick the extra point. They go for two all the time. No, they, they exactly. So let's go to the big board on this one. 66 0 Mark wins over the Jaggers. Wow. Score from around Class 2A Crawford in a dog fight with DeLeon. They fall 30 to 14. Heiko wins over Goldthwait 33 to 10. Valley Mills, they fall to San Saba 56 13. Italy, big winners over Itasca 42 0. Thorndale, big winners over Hearn. Thrall knocks off Rosebud Lot 19 14. Frost wins 24 0. Meridian all over Wortham 40 2. Bartlow, they fall 48-0, and Bremon all over Chilton, 54-13. All right, uh, let's go back out to our game of the week. Cameron Yo, big win tonight over Rockdale. Of course, the battle of the bell. Bell staying in Cameron, Jess. How about those yeomen? Thanks, guys. After two years in Rockdale, the Bell is back in Cameron. 33-14 the final. The Yeomen get the win over the Rockdale Tigers. I am joined by senior center Frank Ibarra. We got to give the offensive linemen some love here. How exciting was this for you guys to bring the Bell back here to Cameron? It was very exciting. You know, it's a big rivalry, Cameron versus Rockdale. That's what everybody looks forward to every, every single football season. What was what was going through your head? You know, you get to ring the bell here, and then they bring it over and they spray paint all the Rockdale colors off of it and put the Yeoman colors on there. What's that like for you? I was just so happy, you know, break the streak. You know, uh, there were we they had beat us two years in a row, and finally we uh, we broke the streak. And you guys are now undefeated in district play with two more games to go. What is it going to take for you to finish out the year undefeated in district play and, and win that district title? We got to play as a family, play as a team. You know, defense keep playing how, how they're playing. Offense, we got to click more. And you guys, you know, had a rough year last year, an uncharacteristic year for you guys. How have you guys, have, how have you guys been able to have success this year and improve? We build our brothership. You know, uh, whenever we're out here practicing, it's like we're, we're brothers playing in the backyard. It's just a family thing. And people might still be counting you out a little bit just because of last season. What do you think? What do you want people to know about this Cameron Yeoman team? Well, we're a different team. You know, we play as one, rise as one, and we win as one. We lose as one, win as one. You won as one tonight, 33-14, the final. Cameron Yo gets the win over Rockdale. You don't know if you can hear the bell, but it is ringing faintly as it drives away. I feel like on its way to Rockdale. Now, I heard that the Tigers, when they won last year, they drove the bell to Cameron and drove it around town and rang the bell all over the place. So it looks like the Yeomen are probably going to do the same little friendly rivalry, drive it over to Rockdale and uh, wake some people up with that bell. I'm sure everyone is awake, though, because I think both towns were here tonight. Every single person was probably here in Cameron for this showdown. A cool moment after the game for head coach Tommy Brashear. He went over and he got to ring the bell. He was so excited. This is first bell win over Rockdale as a head coach. So that was a huge moment for him. And this is a great win for the Cameron Yeoman beating the defending state champion Rockdale Tigers. So the Yeoman have two more games. They'll take on Maynard New Tech next week and then Lago Vista to wrap up the regular season. And then it is on to the postseason. Reporting from Cameron, Jessica Mori, Channel 6 Sports. First, anytime somebody drives a trophy through their opponent's town, I am here for this. Yeah. Sign me up. Next year, I'd like to help drive the bell. Why can't they just, they just need to come here in our parking lot and start ringing the bell and wake everybody up here in Temple. The, the Temple Fire Department yeah. across the street will probably get Oh, yeah. Hey, you know, Jessica mentioned Maynard New Tech. Well, earlier tonight, we saw Troy knock off Maynard New Tech by a big, big score. Join us right now on the FNL Hotline. Troy head coach Ronnie Porter and coach, what does a men like that do for your team's confidence going forward? Oh, it was, uh, it was, it was a great night. Uh, we were excited uh, and excited to hear that Cameron ended up winning that game because that put us in a second spot. It, it was just a good night. Coach, you still with us? I'm here. Okay. I'm here. <laughs> Uh, Co Coach, it's Curtis. You know, you guys have been off to a hot start this season. You know, 7-2 and two overall, 4-1 and one in District 10, 3A Division One. What has clicked for the Trojans this season? Uh, just a, a band of kids that came together and, and, and are doing some special stuff. Uh, started last, last offseason, started in, in November of last year, just making a decision that not going to go without being in the playoffs again. So the kids have put in a lot of work and, and – uh, 
done a good job getting stronger and faster and a little more agile. And it's, uh, it's been fun to be a part of. You know, you don't have any outstanding five-star recruits or anything like that, but every kid knows their position and they know it really well. How, 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 how great is that for you as a coach, knowing that, you know, if somebody goes out, you can plug somebody in and they don't miss a beat? Well, that, that happened a lot tonight. Uh, we had some second and third guys that, that got some time. Uh, it, it's, it's crucial. Uh, we're, still, we're still a young team, uh, and so we still make some young mistakes, but, but that's something that we're having an advantage of as we're, as we're getting some of those guys some key, key snaps right now. Coach, you close out the regular season next week with Lago Vista. Uh, what's it going to take to beat the Vikings and set you guys up well for Week 12? Um, looking to still improve. Uh, you know, that, that's an ongoing thing. We're, we're, we're looking to try to get better every week. Uh, and that's kind of the goal that, that we're presenting with the kids and, and to not be happy with where we are, not to be satisfied with where we are, to, to keep improving and to take each, each game one at a time. Uh, and so we're, we're, when we travel on the road to Lago, who's, who's a good team, uh, we just look to, to take another step forward and, and keep getting better. How much better can you guys get? You got, like I said, one more week left. And how much has this team improved from the start of two a days back in August in the heat up until this point? How much have they grown? The improvement's been exponential. It's 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 really been fun to watch. Uh, oh gosh, it, 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 I can't even. It's hard to even think back that far to what we were at the start of two a days to where we are now. Uh, we're stronger. We're faster. Um, they've really fell into we're, we're in a good spot offensively we're in a good spot defensively they're, they're really understanding the roles and, and what their job is and uh just happy for for the kids and what they what they've accomplished and what they what they're going to put their mind to to accomplish from this point forward well coach we really appreciate you joining us tonight that's a tremendous win for you guys tonight good luck with the vikings next week uh we look forward to covering your run through the playoffs all right thank you all right, Troy head coach Ronnie Porter. I mean, his team has been incredible this year. Incredible. One of the best stories of the year. Now they're in second place in the district right behind Cameron Yo, Looking to make a deep, deep playoff run. Of course, they're going to finish strong next week. This uh, is taking a, on Lago Vista. This is a veteran team. This is a veteran team they have in Troy. And you can really see the turnaround. A lot of these guys were on that team last year. Like, yeah. And you just heard coach talk about that. I'll tell you what, these, uh, in, like he's talked about, these guys stepping up when they needed the most. You plug one guy in, one guy gets injured, you just stick another guy in there, doesn't miss a beat. So think about it. That loss to, that win against Rockdale came on the road against the defending state champions. But and the loss to Cameron came at home. So they're playing tremendous teams and it doesn't matter what stadium they're playing. It doesn't in. face them. No, it doesn't. It, it's it's really cool to see. Doesn't face them at all. All right, go ahead. I think we have uh, we're talking about gridiron player of the week so every single week. Every week we highlight one player who uh, does tremendous things on the gridiron this week. The Robinson Rockets have given up the fewest points during district play, and the big reason why is their linebacker Malik Ford. He's this week's Channel 6 Sports Gridiron Player of the Week. In Robinson, Texas on Friday night, Malik Ford put on quite a show. 20 tackles. Yes, sir. <laughs> Were they just running it straight to you? Were you everywhere? Was it a combination? Just everybody reading their keys and allowing the ball to come to me. Like, they have to come inside, so we fill in gaps. We just made the tackle, made the play. I was seeing him fly around, just hitting. I mean, he's an amazing player. He's, he just does what he does every, every game. Ford, a junior linebacker for the Rockets, lifted the defense during Week H's 34-21 win over Madisonville with 20 tackles, including a forced fumble and two interceptions, one of which he ran back to the house. I've seen it, but usually on the other side of the ball. You know, I, it's probably, uh, I don't know if, if I've seen many of our, I, I know back two or three years ago we had Matt McNew, played the middle, made a lot of tackles for us, but, uh, you know, Friday night was a pretty special game for uh, uh, for Malik. You no, know, I played hard, but, like, I didn't know I had 20. I didn't know I did, like, that, but, like, it was just surprising. For Ford, things seemed to click against the Mustangs, but it comes just weeks after a major change. I started at Fusay. How many games have you played at linebacker? I played, I think I started at Salado, just like two weeks ago. And so as the Rockets continue to push for a playoff spot out of District 8, 4A Division 2, We'll need more of what Malik and his teammates have done to this point. We play in an unbelievable district where there's seven teams that all of them are pretty good, uh, but every week we're getting better.
Can we discuss that second interception? That he was just, crazy. He oskied it to himself and then got under it. That, I, I wish I was That's that a athlete. great player. If great he, kid, great player. Yeah. Does it in the classroom. He changed positions two weeks ago. He's great iron player of the week with 20 tackles. And you know what? Team. That's a, it's all about team. It's all about the team. Yeah. There's no I in team. And it, changing positions, you know, a lot of people his age, you know, 17, 18, they're stuck on, you know, now it's me, 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 me. No. Mm-hmm. He put him in the back burner when, and put his team in the front and when said, I was talking I will do to him, whatever I said, it takes. When I was talking to him, I, what I, was, I was asking him, like, what happened? And he goes, dude, the, off, the defensive line just filled the holes. And I'm, I was asking Coach Allison about that. He's like, don't let it fool you. He goes, our defensive line played a tremendous game. He still has to make those tackles. Tremendous job there. Let's drop down to Class A. These guys never come off the field at all. No, no, six man, it's fantastic. 15 yards for a first down. If you like scoring, you will like six man football in Texas. Oglesby making their FNL debut on the road, taking on Calvert. Oglesby scored a combined 20 points in the last two games. So Calvert's James Green Jr. rolls to his right, throwing it deep. Finds Billy Thompson wide open in the end zone for the touchdown, 32-8 Calvert. Oglesby now on offense, the pitch. The pass, uh-oh, he is picked off by Irwin Jones, brought down around the 35-yard line. So Calvert goes back to work. That's James Green Jr. Dodges the defender, runs it in for the touchdown, 39-8 at that point. Calvert rolls 53-8. Scores from around the private school ranks. Riker takes care of shirts. John Paul II, 48-18. Vanguard on top of Marble Falls Faith Academy, 72-22. A rematch of the last two state championship games in the top six-man ranks. Bolverde, Bracken, Christian takes care of Live Oak, 51 to six. All right, before we go tonight, let's go back out to Jessica Moore. Is that our game of the week? Cameron Yo bringing home the bell. They're probably halfway to Rockdale right now, ringing and dinging. Jess, I mean, uh, what can you say about this tonight? It was all Cameron. Thanks, guys. Well, I just have to clarify one thing here. Tommy Brashear, the head coach here at Cameron Yo, told me that they are not going to drive the bell to Rockdale this year like they have in the past and like Rockdale did last year when they drove it around. Cameron, Tommy Brashear says that they are classy and they are not going to drive it over there. So they're just going to drive it through Cameron, ring the bell, wake up anybody who wasn't at this game, but it is not going to Rockdale. So he definitely wanted uh, me to clarify that for you guys, uh, even though driving it all over Rockdale does sound pretty fun. Um, so a little history of the Battle of the Bell. Now the series overall is 43 wins for Cameron, 21 for Rockdale. When you win the bell, it stays with you the entire year and it comes to all of the football games. So they'll bring it here. The to their two final regular season games. Then it goes all the way to the playoffs. And for them, they would like to bring it all the way to AT&T Stadium for a state championship. Now, they did spray paint over what Rockdale had painted on it before. You get to change the colors to your school colors when you win. Uh, the spray paint obviously will not be permanent. They're going to paint it a little nicer. And they'll probably put, they might put the score on there. Rockdale did that when they uh, dropped 80 points on Cameron two years ago, and they just kept that score on there for fun. Uh, so that's uh, what happened happens with the bell and then during the the spring when it's not football season it's in the foyer of Cameron Yo of Yo High School and they just turned the lights off on me here so I think uh, even though they won they're they're kicking us out of here but um, anyway so it'll stay in the foyer at Cameron and everyone can go at Yo High School and everyone can go uh, check it out and take pictures with it it's a pretty cool tradition they have a whole bell brigade they dress up these girls dress up uh, and they have a whole thing and they bring the bell everywhere and they travel with it and then they set it up and do everything Rockdale does the same thing so really cool tradition here uh, and I think this is our cue that it is time to wrap it up 33 14 the final Cameron Yo wins the 64th edition of the Battle of the Bell. I'll send it back to you guys in the studio. Hey Jess, you know, despite you know the lights are out, your live shot actually looks really good. <laughs> so tell Ryan Fi did a great job, <laughs> great lighting. Yeah, it's time to go. Having, when, the, when, the, when the lights of the scoreboard go off, it's time to go. Ha- having worked with Jessica at the game of the week for my first two seasons here. That that's a familiar scene. Oh my lord! You know what the familiar scene? You know, got to see Matt Rule today at Waco ISD Stadium. Uh, him and the defensive coordinator Phil Snow. Of course, Matt Rule. They're coming off a tough loss last night, but he says it every week in and week out. Defense. He cannot continue to give up the big plays and expect to win. There's been too many times this season which the defense plays really, really well. They give up three, maybe four big plays. Those turn into touchdowns. You cannot do that, especially in the Big 12. Yeah, and I don't think, you know, what happened last night, I don't think that score was going to be that bad. Jessica was out there in the freezing cold. Morgantown, Baylor hoping to bounce back from a tough loss at Texas. 
Opening drive, of course, busted coverage on Baylor's defense. Will Greer finds a wide open Gary Jennings. That was 53 yards for the touchdown. It was 7 0. Then, after a couple of missed field goals by the Mountaineers, Charlie Brewer going to be intercepted for the second time in the quarter. Toyus Avery Jr. going to return it the other way, 42 yards. I tell you what, pretty much the floodgates would open after that. A few plays later, James Lynch, one of the few bright spots on defense, huge sack on Greer. That would lead to an Evan Staley 25 yard field goal. So it was 10 0 after one. The floodgates would open. Okay. Greer up top to David Seals, who I thought was a monster Ooh. the last couple of seasons. 25 yard strike. It was 20 0. Later, it's Greer to Seals again. 65 yards to the house. We talked about big plays. Too yeah. many of them. Five yeah. of them. Five big plays of 25 yards or more. West Virginia, they rolled 58-14. It was actually the largest margin of victory in series history. Well, just, uh, you know, we just haven't really played like that. You know, even against Oklahoma, I mean, you know, it was, the score got away from us at the end, but we played really well for periods of time. But uh, just, just uh, didn't, you know, like I said, I just I don't think any of us saw it coming. thought we were prepared to go play, and, and um, you know, We've had kind of drops all year, but these these drops, you know, went up in the air and they picked them off. And uh, um, you know, we thought we had a couple of nice runs early. It looked like, hey, we're going to be able to, you know, establish something on the ground. Uh, I, was, I was at least proud we didn't quit. I thought we went out there and competed. And the road to the Stag Bowl continues this week for UMHB. They, the crew will square off against McMurray tomorrow afternoon at Crusader Stadium. UMHB coming off a, you know, dominant 49-0 win over Bellhaven last Saturday out in Jackson, Mississippi. The crew recorded a third straight shutout for the first time in school history and now has allowed, has not allowed a point for more than 200 minutes. It's the most in program history as well. Last season, UMHB put up 42 first half points en route to a 62 nothing win over McMurray out in Abilene. So the Warhawks have alternated wins and losses over the last four games, kind of like the Dallas Cowboys this year. The crew now 7-0 for the ninth straight year. Pete Fredenberg says it's what's expected in Belton. Uh, you know, I just think uh, the expectations are high and then being in the last two stag bowls, uh, obviously we would I'd like to be there again, so that that kind of goes without saying that uh, people that come here are uh, expecting to uh, go win championships. And one thing worth noting is this year's Stag Bowl not in Virginia, which is good for me because I was yeah. freezing the last two years. It's in Houston. We're Shenandoah, Shenandoah technically. Yeah, but well, Houston area we call yeah. it Houston area. Yeah, the, you know. I, I've been here almost, what, six years, almost seven years. I think I've seen them lose like three times in my career here. I, that, so it's unbelievable. <laughs> it's, not, it's crazy to say that. I've seen them lose once. Unbelievable. And this is my third season here in Central Texas. All right, you know, another awesome night. Uh, Friday Night Lights, week nine. Incredible. Big wins by Troy, Cameron Yo, La Vega, Midway, Temple. They both are undefeated in district play. They score off next week. Should we just go right ahead up the and road declare in Temple? It? So we're going to go ahead and declare that. That will be our game of the week. Uh, you'll, you know, it'll be official on Monday. But the three of us have now. to play rock paper scissors yeah. to see who gets to go now. So uh, awesome night, though. Uh, also, you know, you should always log on KCNTV.com, download our app. You can always watch news, weather, sports, FNL on Friday nights. Uh, we're going to have, you know, plenty more stuff coming up next week. But uh, battle of the bands, yeah. Moody, Bruceville, Eddie, of course. The fans have spoken. Bruce Folletti, our week eight battle, or week nine, week nine, week nine battle of the bands winner. Take a listen to them. We'll see you next week under the lights. Appreciate it. Here we go.